happening. However, um, I'm a little bit scared. I'm just talking lots because I am trying to hide my nerves because <laughs> your idea today is to put me through a rigorous Portuguese language quiz. Why? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a benevolent being, Carl. Don't be. I, although I do admire your courage. But yes. <laughs> you're a brave man. What? So you're making you're me along. scared. Yeah, I, I, I admire your courage and I am benevolent. I think a few, a few you know, Roman emperors, have, you came on with a Roman gesture. And now I'm wondering if I'm going to get one of these or one of these today. Um, this, this is hot on the heels of Portuguese, well, International Portuguese Language Day, isn't it? That's the inspiration, I think. Yes, yes. Uh, well, basically, the idea is, was that, um, you know, the blog post, as it is, works well for the blog, but it would be too nerdy for the show. So I just thought of adapting some of the content <laughs> for the show uh, and turning it into a fun quiz. Oh, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> OK, well, that's wonderful. And uh, you are, of course, the Beyond Lisbon blogger, Katia Lima. And you're referring to one of your blogs about, which is inspired by International Portuguese Language Day, right? And it's quite detailed, is it? You, you describe it well, as nerdy. Well, Yeah, World Portuguese Language Day, uh, which happened on May the 5th. Mm, I was a day late reporting that, unfortunately, I think. Um, it, it, we have we have got a diary and a calendar in the GMP VIP uh, platform. It was on there, so people were reminded at that point. And I'm, I, I want, would love to say it won't happen again. Um, however, <laughs> I, can't, I can't guarantee that because <laughs> I'm not great on it. I don't even have a diary. I was saying to Mrs. M, I, don't, I, I'm, I'm, I get invitations and there are a few things coming up. And every, every now and then I think I really should get a diary um, so that I can remember all of these things. But I, I still don't and I still haven't. It's, you know, man-made time and, and man-made um, conventions of time, I resent slightly. And I think that's part of the reason why I don't have a diary. But it's very embarrassing when you completely forget an appointment you've made. Anyway, um, we, so, so, that, so there you are with the blog and you've, you've, you've adapted it for use on the screen here on Good Morning Portugal show. So thank you so much. Really grateful to you. Before we get into that, um, just something to report that you might find amusing uh, from one of our uh, contributors this morning, Facebook user, who um, I was saying, uh, talking about this business of um, some of Portugal's most educated people resorting to uh, the food bank system. Somebody here, um, as I was describing what happens when you go into the supermarket sometimes and you get given a paper bag, um, they, um, they by, by a scout, incidentally, they thought it was the environmental movement um, giving out reusable bags. Uh, uh, dang, I just took the paper bag from the volunteer and asked her for more. <laughs> thought they were the environment promoting bags instead of plastic hoops. So that's not what you do, is it, Katia? You're meant to fill those bags up with dried goods. Yes, yes. Uh, because they'll be going to uh, a food bank. So it should be non perishable yeah. goods. Yeah. Yes. Well, although yeah. we do so that, that every person... year in Portugal. That's a yearly um, happening. Is it an, it's, it's, the annual, it's an annual thing, is it? So I had it in my mind yeah. that it was more often than that. And perhaps it will become yeah. more often. No, no, it is. It is. What I mean is uh, there's usually one big event of this that's uh, connected to Banco Alimentar Contra Fome. Uh, yes. and, but then you'll have other, you know, several others uh, throughout the year. Which means, that's my first test, I think, this morning, Food Bank Against Hunger um, this morning. Um, Banco Food Alimentar. Bank. Uh, Banco Alimentar. Yeah, Banco Alimentar con uh, Contra um, Fome. Uh, Fome. Against yeah. Yeah, um, against hunger there. So um, do do what you can. And another beautiful story we heard about yesterday was a man discovering that um, this this was the collection day for food. He the, all the stuff he bought, he just gave it to them as he was leaving the supermarket. I mean, he didn't mean to. He, he just he, he realized what was going on. All the stuff he just bought, he said, "Look, you can have it all." And then went left the supermarket as if that was it, and came back with flowers for. <laughs> the people collecting and everyone, everyone was in tears you know with this with this incredible um outburst of kindness and that was uh, funnily enough that was our, our um our deep thought of the day um and uh, uh, we can repeat it now nothing can make our life or the lives of other people more beautiful than perpetual kindness and that was the most 
I mean, that was the kindest thing, uh, a gesture I've heard for quite some time. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I can't remember even who it was who reported that, but what I wonderful. read that too. On, uh, yeah, it was lovely, I wasn't it? I don't know what it was, but I read that too, yeah. Yeah, it was one of those Facebook things, wasn't it, that we must have both seen and thought, oh, that's lovely. Right, so that's the food bank thing. You now know what to do, everybody. Um, I have a, a other Portugal cultural information to share. Look what I found when I was up in Ponte Lima. Aha! Uh -huh. I that's love the this. one. This is the lavender oh, yeah. Yeah. cologne, right? So I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not going to taste it. I, I do have <laughs> other alcohol available to me in that. It's not, a, <laughs> it's not a Portuguese liqueur, everybody. It's a, a cologne aftershave. Drives yeah. Mrs. M wild. I love it. Now, I need to check with you, though, because I'm out of my depth culturally. It is the old spice, I think, of Portugal, possibly. Is this what is it really identified or associated with old men, Katia? Am I dating myself or putting myself in <laughs> No, sort not necessarily. It's... Not necessarily. Um, that's, that's uh, if I remember correctly, that uh, brand um, appeared around the late 19th century. And uh, some of their products for a time, they were actually um, like, uh, you know, in, in Great Britain, you have uh, products by, by appointment of his oh, yes. majesty, yes. <laughs> the king. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, uh, some of those products were actually used by the um, Portuguese uh, king and queen. Ooh, uh, I think the king actually used one of the brands that was Mujo Real. But it's then people just uh, you know with the, with the eighties uh, and other brands coming in, it just uh, lost some of its um, importance. I think. Yes, it's cachet, but they they, yeah. they do other things, don't they? It, uh, you know, you can tell, can't you, that this is a brand that is ancient, and it, what happens with some brands is they disappear because they think that they can't compete anymore, and they they kind of just give up. But there's a few in Portugal that didn't give up, and they are. Yeah. If you wait long enough, you can you can you can have that sort of cachet, can't you, of of vintageness, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. vintage vintage vintageosity, uh, if that is indeed a word. And this is their website. So uh, you mentioned this. We we looked at fantastic independent Portuguese brands. This is clearly one of them, and I would recommend. I mean, it's a lovely gift. Look, there's there's the, the cologne right there. Um, and which T Duck thinks like looks like a bottle of gin. It could work in the same way, I guess, if you're really desperate. Um, but they do uh, hand soaps. They do the mushko barbering. You see, with all the barbering stuff coming back into fashion, where you can go and get a tattoo and a haircut and a beard trim, this is bang on, isn't it? It's the perfect brand for those sorts of places. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. magnolia, lavender, uh, Polynesia, Polynesian soap, and modern rose. Absolutely fantastic brand, wonderful, and uh, they kept some of the uh, them, uh, our, our yeah. they kept some of them their iconic products and then With created the new ones too. Yeah, isn't that great? That's that's such a wonderful thing. So very. So I'm not in too much trouble. I'm I'm not going to have um, lots of old ladies following me down the street when I wear this. No, no, no I don't think so. Maybe you'll get some, you know, um, a dreamy gaze or something like that with you, but. <laughs> Okay. I, just, I wonder what you meant there, um, because that could be taken on two levels. Um, you know, I may attract the attention of dreamy gaze uh, of, of, of no of gaze of old ladies. Uh, I don't mind either. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's all attention. Um, so I might get the dreamy gaze G A Z E of a, an old lady, and it reminds her of her Nunu who used to wear it back yeah. in the day. Or I might even yes. get a look from Nunu wistfully, thinking to myself, oh, mm, um, yes, that's, uh, that smells good. You smell good, uh, young otter, or whatever he might call me. Okay, it, perhaps uh, we should move on. And um, I have been sent another uh, high-quality aftershave recommendation. Is it gin? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Um, thank you very much. So let's get into the, into the language quiz then, shall we? Just yes, how nervous yeah. should I be, Katya? No, not nervous at all, no. Okay, right. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to do a little drum roll here. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, it's at times like these when I wish I had one of those, and I probably do um, somewhere. Um, I've, oh, I ha I've got this ready, um, which could be useful. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. That's a... <laughs> 
<laughs> you should have that. You should have that. From me. But, um, I, I, I might have to applaud myself. Okay. Oh, what about this? There it is. Aha. Question First number question. one. Question. First yes, question. Okay. okay. Name two countries besides Portugal and Brazil that have Portuguese as their official language. Um, may I go with uh, Angola and Cap Verde? Yes. Clapping sound. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, for the sake of context, um, the other, we're talking about CPLP, the uh, Comunidade de Países de Língua Portuguesa, meaning countries that have Portuguese as their official language. That yes. includes Portugal, Brazil, Mozambique, Angola, Cape Verde, Guinea-Bissau, São Tomé and Príncipe, and East Timor. We should also add that Macau. Um, which is a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China, so not a country per se, also has Portuguese as uh, official language, but you know, for documentation and bureaucratic stuff. Very good, very good. And yeah, yeah it's a bit like Hong Kong, isn't it? It's not like Portugal is saying loudly around the world, um, Macau is ours. And no, we, no. Had a visit, we had a visit, didn't we, from a Chinese high up, which has been quite muted in the press. Um, and I love the way Portugal plays its relationship with China. It's kind of, it's kind of definitely there, isn't it? The, Portugal signals to China, hey, we're good friends. We can do lots of stuff together, but let's not talk about it too loudly around the world. And cause it <laughs> but it's, uh, well, oh, if, you, if you look into um, the history of Macau, that's, uh, that explains some things. Because basically oh, okay. we got, you know, China kind of gave us Macau, but we had to pay them every year. And then yes. uh, Macau went back to China in 1999. Uh, and right. then, although Portuguese is still the official language, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course, these things often are, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Okay. And you mentioned the uh, CPLP there. Of course, you have your blog, and we must have the link for that. Um, and also on the GMP VIP platform, there is a specific reference to CPLP under quite a lot. It has to be said, a, a lot of uh, language and culture references there. So, yeah, um, actually, th there is a, a website specifically, the CPLP.org website uh, for such matters as well. So mm -hmm. we're well served with these resources uh, and Michael Heron coming in. Look at him. Don't forget Equatorial Guinea. Third official language is Portuguese. Um, I think you were me. talking about. Yeah, not the official language. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, question number two. Okay. <laughs> this is an easy one. Modern Portuguese, <laughs> modern Portuguese evolved mostly from which language? <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> Easy one. Well, it's a Latin language, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. From Latin. Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> he had all the hallmarks of a trick question. You know, I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> Lusitanian. Look at this. Klingon is not the right answer. No, no, no. Is, no, that, no. is he just being silly, do we think, with that? Yeah. Uh, he, Maybe. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but Michael Heron has been drawn in, I think, by the. By the billing today, are you doing the Portuguese language quiz? He's enjoying himself, isn't he? Clearly. Uh -huh. That's good. Okay. All right. Latin, he says, uh, Michael yeah. Hunters, by the way. Okay, good. Whew, two out of two, 100% so far. <laughs> okay, so question number three. Hold on just a minute. The oldest, the oldest written document in Portuguese was A, a chronicle, B, a testament. Uh, chronicle. Can I try again? <laughs> no, okay. How about a testament? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, you see, I'm thinking it, t testament sounds rather biblical, doesn't it? And oh, yes. uh, although Portugal is an ancient country, it's not that old, is it? So, no, oh, dear. No, no. <laughs> oh, here's a challenge. Was it Seth's charter? No, that's no, no. A, no. Sure. That was the second oldest. 
<laughs> it is. And um, the oldest person in Portugal is still waiting for a phone call to be answered. <laughs> but aren't they? From, from Seth as well. Very good. <laughs> Very good, T Duck. <laughs> Having some fun this morning at Seth's expense. Okay, so two out of three, slightly crestfallen. Um, I it think was, we need to. Yeah, just like to add that it was the testament of Don Force II, dating back to 1214. Right. Well, yeah. I just wanted to move on. Um, but yes, it was it was it was the testament. What was it about? What it was a testament of what to, to whom? What, what was the idea? It was the king. And and oh, so it, it's the oldest document, it's like a proclamation by him, probably saying, I am king. It's a will, it's a will, a will. <clears throat> oh, a Sorry, will and a will. testament. Okay, so this is the oldest document we have historically in Portugal. Is the will of? No, sorry, in Portuguese, in Portuguese, in the Portuguese. In Portuguese, language. okay. <coughs> yeah. And it, uh, is, is it um, in the library at Coimbra by any chance? Uh, probably in Lisbon, in Porto. I guess. Okay. All right. All right. Because I was hoping to mention the bats that fly around the the um, library that's there. In, uh, that's in Mafra. I think maybe in Coimbra they have them as well. I don't know. But you're I'm right. You're absolutely right. Mafra. I'm doing really badly this morning, um, and I hope that isn't one of the questions that's coming up because I'm no, really no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on a minute. There's another answer. The oldest document in Portuguese is the one o'clock lunchtime rule. Could it's be true. Really... Yeah. <laughs> Michael, please. We're having a serious quiz here. Con contain yourself. Sorry. <laughs> Back to you, Katia Lima. Question number four. Give one example of a difference in vocabulary between European Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. So, a, a, oh. I mean, something. Yes. But I've got this. Know, I've got this. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. And are you talking about pronunciation or are you talking about a written word? Because I can do both here. No, no, no. I'm talking about one. Uh, in this, in this uh, case, it can be like one object, uh, but has to, that has two different uh, words in Portugal and in Brazil. Well, I would go with, you see, we've got um, T-Duck saying bon dia. That's a pronunciation difference, not a different bon word. Bon dia. Yeah, that's right. But <laughs> I would go with bem-vindo. Bem bem-vindo. Um, bem You're not giving I'm going to give you one example, and then you can give me another, okay? Like, oh. for example. <laughs> that's <laughs> something else. <laughs> Stop! Is he being? He's enjoying himself too much this morning, isn't he? Stop it! Uh, for example, in Portugal we say autocarro. In Brazil yes. they say ônibus. Oh, okay, I got it. And I, I thought I was doing so well because I thought um, the not in pronunciation, but I'm talking about different words for the same thing. Yeah, I, Benvindo is as good as I've got because I was thinking that uh, you know it got trans truncated, didn't it? To B E N V I N D O. Um, or hyphenated, and those are two different versions of welcome, uh, whether you are Portuguese, uh, Brazilian, or, or uh, European Portuguese. But sadly, I'm getting a shake of the head, which um, is um, uh, slightly upsetting, I've got to say. So sorry, I've let you down there. You, okay. the Portuguese people, and, and, and my fellow expats on this occasion. So you give up? No. Okay. Onward, so, that would not be know, that would not be a good look, would it? I, onward to question five. Let me just give the drum roll. Oh no, did you want to give more examples? By the way, yeah, just one more, just one more. Like for example, in Portugal we say telemóvel. In yes. Brazil they say celular. Oh, do they? That's interesting. Yeah. It's celular. Okay, it's good to know these yeah. things. And there are many like, different words like this. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in when I was in Ponte Lima recently, it, it's like the distinction, isn't it? I was having a really good chat with a waiter in the restaurant at uh, Ponte Lima, and we were having a real laugh about you know don't. I called him um, a triperos, I think, <laughs> and he said, "Careful now, like you've got to be careful with that sort of thing." And then we were talking about finos and imperials and beakers and cymbalinos and those sorts of distinctions and that's happening of course within portugal as well um mm -hmm. mike was saying tu and você but then again is that strictly speaking correct because you would use to have that distinction um you? yes we, i mean in in portugal we usually when we speak informally we call the other person tu and você is informal is formal uh, yeah. In Brazil, generally speaking, they use você as informal, but in some cases they also use the two, but, the, but that's less common. Right. And look, is he being naughty yeah. again? 
Rapariga yeah. means something different in Brazil. He's good at this, isn't yeah. he? Showing yeah. me right up here. Okay, that's enough. Thanks now, Michael. Have a nice day. Um, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> okay, a drum roll for the question. Where are we, number five? Yeah, number five, yeah. Okay. The Lusitanian was a language that was spoken in pre-Roman times in a yes. big part of what is today Portugal. Yes. To which language group did it belong? A, Slavic languages, B, Celtic languages, C, Arabic languages. Celtic, B. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> Michael, don't go anywhere. I, I was only joking. <laughs> I need your help. In fact, why didn't you, instead of just jumping in like, I, yeah, pick me, pick me, uh, miss, for to, to Katia, uh, teacher's pet. Why weren't you sending me these on WhatsApp like a good pal would do? Instead of going head to head with, this is, this, is the Mike, this is the Michael Heron who took over the show once. We we got the cut of your jib, Senor Heron. Okay, right. So B, yes. Question five. Uh, T yes. Duck, very happy Celtic there. Languages. Okay. Um, oh, and yes, it was a cane sabia. So that's where I may may mm -hmm. have been pre-programmed to answer that correctly. I have three out of five currently. Uh, by the way, oh, how many questions do we have this morning, Katia? uh we have seven questions and one challenge in the end oh my goodness okay the tension is building <laughs> an extra ton of challenge at the end Look at him. <laughs> nobody would believe you mate if i did that <laughs> yeah. all right okay so on on to the next question um oh i was nearly played my sad trombone who doesn't like a sad trombone first thing in the morning <laughs> question number six Celtic languages in the Iberian Peninsula are not well documented, but some words in modern Portuguese are believed to have Celtic origins. Which of the following three words is Celtic? Ooh. A. Almofariz, B. Bué, C. Cerveja. <laughs> this is a trick question, isn't it? Because um, we know that our Celtic friends like a drink. Okay, which could be... Yeah, come on. I mean, uh, Bobby, <laughs> we had Bobby O'Reilly on yesterday, and he was talking about, we, we, we mentioned how the Irish passport is perhaps the best in the world and how Irish people are loved all around the world. And, and notwithstanding stereotypes, global stereotypes, I think it is a, no, a matter of fact that the uh, Irish people do like a drink or two, the Celtic people, right? Um, and I'm wondering if you're, if, if it's a trick question, if, you, if it's leading that way. I don't think it's num I don't think it's a because that was a, a word that began with al, which is an a of Arabic and Moorish influence. Okay, so we can we, we can reject that. B. What was the second word? Bue. Bue. What does that actually Bue. mean? You may have you, uh, you may have heard it in um, sentences like uh, já não vou lá há bué tempo gosto bué daquilo. Um, okay. Bué, I'm meaning a lot. An emphasis, a word of emphasis there. Yeah, okay. meaning a lot. Yeah. Mm. Gost <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. So you That's love something it. Something people say. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. I love those little phrases. I am going to go. Yeah. However, I am going to go with uh, T with T Duck and um, oh, although Her Heron has thrown in a curveball here. Her own Heronius Maximus descended from the famous legion legionnaire. Um, cerveja is from the Latin cerevisia, so I was, was going to go with cerveja with tea duck. Uh, however, yes, it is bue, isn't it? It is it, with a colloquial, no. no, 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 it's cerveja. But let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> he gets a sad trombone for messing, messing with my mind there. So it, it can be Latin. No, I'll, I'll explain why, why, what happens is that. Uh, like I said, Celtic languages, and that includes Lusitanian as well, they're not well documented, which means that in some cases, and that's what happened in the Iberian Peninsula, in a lot uh, of cases, um, there are words that got to uh, modern day Portuguese, but the, um, how can I say this in a simple way? Um, well, so, such that I would understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm not, I'm not doing it well in the quiz, but there's no we need to don't, be like that. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. No, no. Uh, we don't have um, written records 
part yes. of, of Lusitanian, for example. But we do have written records in Latin of Lusitanian words. I'm sure I've seen them at the back of finances. It's a bit like, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit like, for example, um, let's uh, imagine a completely different example. Like, for example, uh, in Japan, uh, they have, uh, they adapted the word McDonald's. They say something like Makodonoradu, something like that, because they don't have the L sound. So yes. basically, if you're going to... Let's imagine that someone who never heard of uh, McDonald's goes to Japan and sees that written somewhere, and they think that the original word is Makadonaradu or something like that. But no, yes. it's McDonald's. So it's more or less the same thing that happens here. So we have several words that we assume have a Celtic origin, but um, we don't have written records in Celtic written language, but in Latin, I mean, Celtic words in uh, using a Latin alphabet. Yes, got it. Okay, and that, I, that would, that's the beauty, isn't it, as the, of the evolution of a language? Yeah. Um, and, and then we see a really good example. So, boy, it's a great word to have learned this morning. So, it's I, Angolan. Is it? Yeah. So it's 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 oh okay. So that's a good word to, uh, and it's coming via Angola. But the right answer was Savesia, which is the Kel Celtic, like yeah. Celtic in in. Celtic influence version of, of the original Latin, Seravizia. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you imagine a, a Roman going in and ordering two pints? It would be uh, quite interesting with a couple of Seravizias, please, barman. A couple of your best frothy ales. I don't know what that is in Latin, although Michael Heron probably does. Um, celebration Hello. time. Come on, what was that about? Well, is, is she watching in the earlier part of the show, I wonder? Because we're not. I'm not celebrating at the moment. I've, I'm now down to, I think, three out of six correct answers. I'd just like to add a little thing about um, this, this um, Cerveja example. If you look yeah. to at other uh, Romance languages, you'll see that no one says uh, anything vaguely resembling Cerveja. You have oh, bière. Yes. In, in France, you have birre or birre. Uh, in Italy, uh, in Spain, what do they call it? Um, not Cerveja, I think. Maybe oh, in right. Galicia. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, Michael Heron will know that as well. But the <laughs> thing is, you know, it's not, again, it's it's a word that was not of Latin origin, but it was written using uh, the Latin alphabet. So okay. this was a bit complicated to get. No, 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 so, I get it, I get it. And it was my, it was going to be my first answer. And I think one of the rules of the quiz, of any quiz, is sometimes it's best to stick the first answer, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Once you yeah. start slipping and don't sliding think too down. much about it yeah. yeah don't doubt yourself don't doubt yourself oh we've got <laughs> portuguese has joined us behind the scenes i think he should join for the last couple of questions don't you yeah That's yeah cool. yeah especially for the challenge i'd love to see that oh okay you, <laughs> you say that with some glee <laughs> you want to see the portuguese are challenged <laughs> let's give him a nice big round of applause <laughs> Giza! naughty <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm just going to move you to this screen. Otherwise, I'm going to spend. No, don't move. I'm going to, I, I'm going to spend all my time looking like this, which doesn't make okay. any sense. Yeah. All right. You're okay. going to challenge me on my Portuguese. I've got my A1 really? certificate. So, uh, yeah. uh, ah, congrats ah, with your A1. I've so been I'm, trying. I'm not, I'm not feeling confident at all. <laughs> no, me neither. I did go into this with some confidence. Good morning, by the way. Uh, great to see you. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Bom bombs, dears. And, uh, Good start. Yeah, everyone's everyone's happy, right? We're all happy. Yeah. We are, we are. Notwithstanding uh, having a little bit of an embarrassing outing with the Portuguese, I'm taking one for the team. Is how I see it. Um, <laughs> no, like, you know, only two other people are are, are, are uh, taking part. Others are just watching and pointing and laughing as usual, um, <laughs> but getting the benefit nonetheless. Of, open, um, your, open your vowels, charming. Absolutely. No, that, yeah, that is the way to train for any competition of this kind. Is yeah. A big old vowel opening. Yeah. Um, the bigger the audience, the bigger the uh, vowel opening, I find. Quite, quite. Yes. Thank goodness it's not a massive audience in that case. <laughs> right. So it's, look, we're just, we're just delaying. We're just uh, delaying the, the inevitable here, Tony, I think, aren't we? We're chatting to avoid question number seven, possibly, here. So let's get that uh, drum roll back <laughs> onto, onto the soundboard. We go to question number seven. 
besides Latin, Arabic was also another big influence on the Portuguese language. This influence can be traced back to the period of Arab rule in the Iberian Peninsula. Which of the following words has Arabic origins? Uh, A. Chopana. <laughs> B. Almfada. C. Cheval. Right, Tony, I need to defer to you as a good host would to his guest. Uh, I'm very confident that it's Cheval. Are you? Yeah. Cheval. No, yeah. I'm not. I, I'm thinking it's a B. I'm less I'll... confident now. <laughs> <laughs> You said B, Carl. Yes, correct. I have, a, I have a little bit of problem with this overconfidence thing sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> when it works, it works well. <laughs> when it fails, well, it's spectacular. You, uh, for your troubles, are going to get a tromboning now as well, my friend. Hold on a minute. Oh, oh. yeah. And that's uh, unfortunate, isn't it, to come in with such confidence towards the end of the quiz and to get the trombone. But, but the, you can redeem yourself. I think I'm, you're uh, just by virtue of statistics, and they are, that statistics can be so hurtful at times, can't they? 100% failure rate for Tony so far in uh -huh. this quiz. For, for me, <laughs> he's taking it like a man, though. Look at him. He is taking it like a man. There's something we can learn this morning. Yeah, I, I'm feeling very, very, very positive about the next one. <laughs> I remember when I got you last time. He's, yeah. You can take this approach. It's A, B, or C, says Tabitha. Yeah. That's yeah. A fair approach, isn't it? X, where X is the correct answer. Yes. And yeah. this, is what, this, is, this is the all inclusive modern way, isn't it? The modern, as an educationist, Tony, you will appreciate this. This is very encouraging to the student. Uh, Tabitha to, uh, should get a certificate <laughs> for that answer. For, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, so should I. I was here. <laughs> oh dear, stop it. Please. Okay, where were we? We were, I, I just like to add, sorry. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Sorry, sorry. So I, I've got four out of six of North. Did I, no, I four yeah. out of seven. Four out of seven. Uh, no, I wasn't here to see it. So um, we're, we're back to one. Carl. Fact check. We're back to one. <laughs> Call the fact checkers, yeah. All right. C is silent, as in banana. Oh, she's showing off now. Just because you got a certificate. Of, of attendance doesn't mean you can start showing off, Tabitha. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, back to you, Katia, for the big challenge, I believe. No, no, I'm just going to add before moving on to the challenge that Chopana is also uh, means hut, a small hut, and it's also a word of Celtic origin. Yeah. Almfada wow. is obviously of Arabic origin. Uh, every word uh, in Portuguese that starts with al, like almfarij, for example, that's a mortar and pestle. Or place oh. names like Alcantara, Almada, uh, they all have Arabic origins. And uh, Al stands for the definite art article, the. Yeah. For example, in Lisbon, you have a neighborhood called Alfama. Um, and um, it has that name because uh, it meant uh, Alhama, with Hama being a source of uh, hot water. Wow, so when people so were going we believe for the bath, had a kind of yes, 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 yes. so they would be hammer time in Lisbon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nice, yeah. what's, what's the um, what, what was the word for uh, uh, mortar and pestle? Chopin, uh, Almfarish, uh, Almfarish, Almfarish, okay. I'll try I'll to remember that. I can write it down here for you. Yes, I, 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 I use that a lot. <laughs> 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 well, you'll see it everywhere now <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's right <laughs> yeah that, that happens doesn't it that's true it yeah. does a reticular activation and our guest benjamin stubbs uh he of the 30 day happiness boot camp talks about this i think he'll be talking about it next monday as soon as you've seen it you can't unsee it and there it is on the screen Alma farish that is pestle yeah. and mortar is it yes 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 Wow, okay. And Chavalu, that was the um, option C. Chavalu is a word of Romani uh, origin, meaning a young person. Ah, okay, all right. That's very helpful, very educational. Um, and people, uh, look, this is outrageously funny, says Mrs. M. <laughs> I, I, I kind of heard like Shalom. That's, no, no, no. You know what I mean? that's, where, that's where I that's where I took, I don't know, other to be honest, I was guessing. You are a cunning linguist, it has to be said. I am a cunning linguist. And um, so I'll be waiting, is, is Seth 
in Arabic, possibly. You see, I was going to ask, thank you, Global Nobles. Good morning to you uh, for that. I was going to ask you if you said, and it's very brave, isn't it? It's a very bold assertion when you hear these rules in about Portuguese. You know, any word that begins with al is would be of Arab, Arabic origin. Uh, there are no, there are no, with one or two notable exceptions, no words beginning with N apart from my friend Nelson, which begins and ends with N. Um, and my father-in-law, Alan, um, who I will gladly go and tell after the show that his name is of Arabic no, origin. No, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Alan is not included. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, that would have been such a lovely bonding moment between me. I mean, uh. that, that we need to bond much more. We were very close, I would say. It, it's uh, interesting, was, was though, much... because in this way, uh, it, it's it's... It's something that happens in English as well, isn't it? I, I think something like uh, 30% of English words are of French origin. And then right? um, so there's the Germanic side, there's the Celtic side. There's the So it's, it's similar in that way. I didn't think of it like that. And are they I not having to be returned with Brexit? <laughs> well, uh, we'd have a lot of trouble communicating, unfortunately, if we did have to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, like we don't already. But anyway, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's not get bogged down in that quagmire of Anglo-French relationships. Um, long may it's vive la résistance uh, and, the, and, the, and the magic between the two countries. So we, we, are, we are into the challenge now, aren't we? We're into yes, the challenge. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so glad to have my brother Tony with me on this occasion. Tell my wife I love her, Tony, if anything happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thank anniversary! Know, Happy anniversary, by the way, I should say. Thank bon, yeah. bon anniversary! Oh no, that's French, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> right. Anniversario. Anniversario. Bon. Bon. Feliz anniversario. Ah, feliz anniversary. Feliz, yes. Feliz anniversario. I'm going to write it down here for you. There we go. Yeah, you see, they say they say that after ten minutes, you're not taking any more information in. But I would say, with this, with our format here, the information is going in thick and fast. People are picking up all sorts of things on all sorts of levels. It's like it's like a pantomime. Feliz aniversario. Yeah, Here it is going onto yeah. the screen right now. You were a very young man once, Carl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, my life did begin at an early age. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you talking about the photographs? I'm talking about the photographs, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, can we go? On, can we, <laughs> the only challenge I'm getting this morning from, from Katia. Okay, let's let's come back to the challenge this morning. It's, you are, if, in case you've just tuned in, uh, you are seeing the Portuguese on your screen. You're seeing Beyond Lisbon blogger Katia Lima uh, of the Good Morning Portugal show this morning where we are taking part in a Portuguese language quiz. I want to do more of these. It's been fantastic. Fun, despite uh, the disappointment that's gone with it at times. <laughs> it's been very good fun. So on to the challenge now, the climax of the quiz. Can I have a drum roll, please? Oh, so, yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was my nerves. <laughs> yes, there you go. The longest non-technical word in, Port in the Portuguese language, with 29 letters in total, is anticonstitucionalissimamente which means in a very unconstitutional way. And I'm going to put it here for you that's, on the chat, and I will ask Tony's you to it. pronounce it. Right, Tony, could you step away from Google, please? That's not us. Look, he's definitely Googling, isn't he? Look at him. You just have he's, to pronounce it. Why are you Googling it? He's not even trying to hide the fact that he's Googling while he's, while he's taking part in the quiz. No, 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 I'm not Googling. I'll do something else. Okay. All right, this is a great challenge. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> what are you? You're doing something else. Okay, that's fine then. Right. Okay. Hands where we can see them. Are they those false hands that you've got? <laughs> yeah, I've got to be, you have to have a pair of false hands. You have to have a pair of false hands. <laughs> Zoom anti, anti, anti constitutional amendment. Oh, such a good and confident start. And he lost it towards the end. <laughs> well, no, no, no. You know what I remembered at the end? We, yeah. We're always tempted to go ente, aren't we? And you don't ever pronounce the eh like that. It's you like continente. Yourself. Most people spend their yeah. first few months in Portugal saying, um, I, I like I like shopping at continente. And it's <laughs> continent, isn't it? You know? Yeah, but uh, it's, it's so in, immature as well, because a lot of these new Brits and uh, are in, in continent, and they, they, they get the phone <laughs> out, don't they? And they ring someone and say, well, hey, mate, how are you doing? I'm in continent. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, t- uh, I mean, I, no, 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 I never did that. No, I would never do that either. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now, uh, can I add in a kind of lavanda acabrito way? Can I do it in my Portuguese commercial voice? Yes, please. Really? Okay. So Tony's had a go, and I think he kind of he he threw himself, as it were, toward halfway through. He was reading ahead. He saw the main yeah. at the end, and there was like, a break in confidence there. Yeah, yeah he, he, it was. Yeah, the yeah, end, yeah, yeah he, he went in really kind of confident, headstrong, and then something happened halfway through that. Just um, falling, and, Carl. Come on. Yeah, and, and like fair play to you, it was a noble effort. I, we, we, <laughs> we, we salute. Oh, no. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, Get on with it. Agora, <laughs> agora in Portugal, anti-constitutionalismamente. Uh, uh, what? I'm trying to think who you sounded <laughs> like. Then. You sounded you, you like. Said- um, <laughs> You said anti-constitutionalissima. You, you skipped a syllable. I want there. a replay. I want to be the... Re- <laughs> the okay, hold okay, on a minute. Okay, 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 can okay. the producer please roll that again? Because I'm not happy about that. Can I, I, can, th- I just give you, can I just give you a little tip here to help? You try to break that up uh, into particles like anti, yep. constitutionalissima. Yeah. Because yeah. it has to be constitution. And then meant in the end. <laughs> All right, okay, so both of us. Uh, okay, fair point. Uh, now, you, <laughs> now you see it. I do see where I fluffed a little bit in the middle there. Um, yeah. And maybe I was being too adventurous doing it in that Portuguese commercial voice as well. That was um, a Portuguese commercial voice. Oh, yeah, too, voice. because you speak slower, so that would be helpful, yes. Yeah. Peter what, Sellers. What? That's who you sounded like. <laughs> it wasn't. You sounded like Peter Sellers. <laughs> That's who you sounded like. Keto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anti-constitutionally is a mente. Mami. That's a, that, that was what it sounded like to me. Did you yeah. just do it without trying there? I think that was a pretty good effort, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a bad time. Okay, go, so, on, Carl, go on, go on, go on. Anti-constitutionalisamente. No, you skipped one. I said in the middle. <laughs> Concionalisamenta. That's the bit that I'm missing. Mint. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that E is as short as your um, hair. <laughs> I can't really? say anything. I, I, I don't know like why, why I was no, saying it, 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 just, it. Just how you, how you teach is, is, a, is a great skill, isn't it? Because that's gone in. That's really gone in. When you say, I'll never forget that when you say, whenever I say me, I'll I'll be thinking to myself, it's as short as my hair. Well, we didn't, um, I I don't know. I think we failed that challenge, but we learned a lot in the process, Tony. Yeah. What does it mean? (laughs) Anti-constitutional. In a very, in a very anti-constitutional way. Right. Because the, the, you have anti as the prefix, meaning, you know, the same as in English, anti against something. Constitution, meaning, uh, being the root for constitução. Mm. Yes. And then uh, mente is, in a way, like you have... Um, ah, so it's an adjective. Yeah, I, no, no, I, no, yeah. It's, it's a suffix. Oh. It's a suffix, like... The, the word itself, yes. It's a, a, an adverb. We call right. that adverbio de modo. It's an adverb. Mente, the, suf- the suffix mente, means in a way. So, for example, you have rapidamente, which means in a quick way. Ah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's it. Anticonstitutionalissimamente in a very yeah. anti-constitutional way. You make it sound so easy. Um, and I think <laughs> you know, it I've is got, if you break up the words. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I get it when you break it up. How do you eat a Portuguese elephant? Probably with rice and chips. <laughs> and an egg on top. <laughs> <laughs> No, one bite at a time, silly. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, um, and it's not quite as simple as unconstitutional.